I want to respond to a video made by the YouTube user named Ferrecci. He's um, a friend from Germany. Hello. So you made a video recently titled Questions About Evolution, in which you asked three basic questions about evolution. Now, I'm, not, I'm no biology expert. I definitely have a lay person's interest in biology and geology. Evolution is one of those topics. It's one of my hobbies to read about it. And I have probably about three, four dozen books on the subject, and I'm constantly reading about evolution. So I can just answer your questions with what I know, which will certainly be insufficient at times. Okay, so the first question you asked was, why do human beings not have fur? Um, unlike our closest ancestors, uh, relatives, chimpanzees, the great apes, monkeys, orangutans, they have a lot of hair. Why don't we? So this question, like the others you asked, unfortunately are kind of tricky. Um, and I can kind of explain to you maybe a little bit of why it happened, uh, as far as exa exactly how these things happened. I'm not a biologist, I'm not a zoologist, and even you know some of the professionals, This a lot of this is speculation. But the most recent answer to date to why we have less body hair is at one point in our evolution, we uh, moved from being scavengers to active hunters. That is, in our early evolution, we were mostly plant eaters. This is why we don't have sharp teeth like other animals who eat a lot of meat, whether it be uh, a shark or a dinosaur or an alligator. They're all meat eaters, and their teeth are like, you know, jagged and, and like razor blades, like nails. Our teeth are very flat, which... Um, if you're familiar with the EEA, this is the uh, environment of evolutionary adaptation. This is the environment that an organism evolves in. For us, our EEA was Africa, uh, as far as from what we know now. So that was the environment in which we evolved. And back then, we were mostly plant eaters. You hear all these great stories about uh, great giant men going out with spears and arrows and catching big game and dragging it home for the family to eat. Now, that was a lot rarer than uh, these stories might have you think. Early man mostly survived on plant food that was gathered by women. And um, not just plant food, but, but small um, meat animals like uh, squirrels or, or little rodents, stuff like that, that man could catch. But men didn't group together in big tribes, you know, till quite a while into their evolution. So living alone, living in very small groups, it was not easy for a man to catch a big animal. Most likely the big animal would eat the man. So we relied mostly on plant food and small animals, rabbits, uh, rodents, stuff like that. And our teeth shows that because we don't have sharp teeth. We have plant eating teeth. And our digestive systems are adapted to eating plants. Um, meat is not actually especially good for you. Red meat, it takes your system like nine days to digest. Uh, our system, our teeth, our digestive system, our stomach, our intestines are all designed mostly to eat a plant diet, which is strange considering how much meat we eat here in the West. Nonetheless, I don't want to get too far off topic. The point is that early man was mostly scavengers who ate plant food and um, small rodent type meat creatures. And so they weren't very active in that sense. And then at one point in our evolution, when we started to band together more and learn to communicate and get groups of men together who could take down big animals, they switched from scavenging plants and rodents to hunting big game, which became a much more active lifestyle, which meant they sweat more and burn more calories. And in their EEA, which was Africa, it was a very hot climate. And so... See, many other animals, if you haven't noticed, don't sweat like we do. Even uh, apes and chimpanzees who live in very hot areas. They have their hair and they release body heat in different ways, but they don't sweat like we do. So the speculation, and this is an absolute fact, but the speculation is that the switch from scavenging to active daytime hunting in Africa required both uh, the ability to sweat and the loss of body hair to f facilitate sweating. Sweating cools your body. If you can't sweat, you will overheat and you will die of a heat stroke. So eventually, less hair became an adaptive trait in that hot environment. 
those who had less and less body hair may have lived longer, did not have heat strokes, could hunt for longer time because they didn't overheat, and eventually, slowly, creatures, uh, humanoids with less body hair, uh, were fit, were fitter to survive in that environment and passed down their genes, which were less hair to their children, who, if they had less hair, survived better, and so on and so on, to the point where we don't have, you know, we're not completely bald all over our bodies, and if you look at people like Russians and people who live in Iceland in colder areas, they tend to have more body hair um, on areas that other people, other races, Africans and Asians, don't have. A lot of Russian people, uh, in, genetically, hair is on the back and the shoulders, an area that um, people in warmer climates don't have. So most of it's related to climate, but that's the main theory. I'm sorry it took so long to explain, but moving from a non-active lifestyle of gathering plants to an active lifestyle of hunting and needing to burn more calories and definitely sweating more in order to sw sweat and cool our bodies the hair needs to be gone because that'd be like wearing a coat and you very easily get overheated I'm gonna move on hopefully that made sense um, your second question was about sexual reproduction and how organisms evolved from being asexual reproductive to um, requiring a male and a female in order to reproduce. This is called the evolution from um, mitosis to meiosis. Mitosis, if you remember the diagrams from your biology classes, one organism that reproduces asexually. It doesn't need a sexual partner. Um, kind of looks like an egg, a little blob, and you can see it kind of diverge into two separate blobs, and then they kind of, you know, bloop. I don't know, I'm not good with that animating stuff, but you probably know what I'm talking about. I cannot answer, and I'm not sure if microbiology can answer why this evolution, or sorry, how this evolution exactly happens. I'm not a microbiologist, and even if I wanted to understand, it'd be very hard for me to understand that type of um, peer-reviewed scientific literature. It's not easy. So as far as what I know of why it happens, I can't tell you how it happens why it happened um, is simply for diversity, genetic diversity within organisms. Because if you have just mitosis, one organism splitting into two, you have very little genetic diversity. And of course, uh, according to the theory of natural selection, the more diversity, the better, because you have more options for surviving in that environment, um, more options for nature to select from, for um, environmental fitness. So that it, it, mitosis did not provide a lot of genetic variance. Whereas two organisms that have different chromosomes and different genetic um, mutations and material coming together to reproduce gives more genetic variance. For example, if let's say humans, uh, we can imagine humans uh, being able to do mitosis. It was just me and I was somehow able to split myself down the middle and make two of myself. There would be very little genetic diversity there. It would basically be a clone of myself. Whereas in the case of meiosis, if I meet a woman, we have different traits and we come together sexually. We're going to have a child that is a mix of her genetic traits and my genetic traits. And so it has a more uh, diverse selection of uh, survivable traits. You know, it may, the child may get its blue eyes from me and the, its black hair from its mother. It may get its tallness from me and it may get, um, you know what I mean though? So it provided more options for genetic diversity. And gen genetic diversity is good in an environment that is constantly changing. It means survivability and fitness and adaptation. I hope that made sense. Your last question was on the origin of human intelligence. I can't answer that question. I would recommend a few books, Carl Sagan, The Dragons of Eden. Um, and another book, Life Ascending by Nick Lane, The Ten Great Inventions of Evolution, it addresses quite a few of the questions you asked. As far as the origins of human intelligence, I actually want to make a video on this in the near future, so I don't want to give out what I'm going to say here. Um, but it has to do with the fact that if we didn't have our, our intelligence, we wouldn't have a hell of a lot else. We don't have claws. We're not very big. We don't have sharp teeth. We don't have a lot of defensive measures like other creatures do. They're like living shields or living weapons. We're very fragile compared to other animals. 
uh, and we're not very agile. We can't move very fast. We're kind of clumsy. So it has something to do with that. If we didn't have our intelligence and our language, we would not be fit uh, for survivability. Another quick thing to note here uh, about human body hair is that's why you have goosebumps if you've ever wondered. Uh, when it gets cold uh, or when you get scared, you get goosebumps. Goosebumps are a leftover from evolution from when we used to have a big coat of fur because when it would get cold, uh, you would get goosebumps and the fur would puff up like a jacket and trap in an extra layer of heat to keep us warm. It would also, uh, if you got scared, you would get goosebumps and it would make your hair puff up and make you look bigger and more threatening to your enemies. You've probably seen cats do this when they get freaked out, their hair puffs up. That's originally what goosebumps are for, um, for our big coats of furs that our ancient hominoid ancestors used to have. So we have the leftovers, we don't have the fur anymore. Kind of an interesting piece of information I learned. But i got to end this now, so I hope that kind of made sense. Peace.